Hi, I'm Joe Roth. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and informing people about our life-saving mission. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. The impact of technology on healthcare, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Oscar Health Insurance, the New Jersey State Nurses Association, and the Institute for Nurses, Wells Fargo, Felician University, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by Cone Resnick. Promotional support provided by NJ.com. Small news, big news, true Jersey. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Welcome to Caucus, New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. You know, technology has changed the way we do everything from the way we work and shop to how we communicate. Now it's changing the way healthcare is provided. Here in the studio to discuss the latest changes to the patient experience, we have Mr. Tom Gordon, Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer for Virtua. Linda Reed is Vice President and Chief Information Officer for St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Joe Carr is Chief Information Officer for the New Jersey Hospital Association, and Chad Brizendine is Vice President and Chief Information Officer for St. Luke's University Health Network. I want to thank all of you for joining us to talk about technology and healthcare. How much of a difference are we talking about? Just say in the last five years, how much has changed in the last five years, technology and healthcare? Technology is, is changing uh, immensely in, in healthcare. The uh, things that uh, we're doing in hip replacements and uh, radiology imaging and PACs and just the technology. PACs. Um, the uh, imaging for, um, well, the storage, the, the images that are stored from a radiology um, are stored now electronically instead of being put out onto a film or onto a disc. They're, they're in this thing called this PACS, which is an archive, which then can be shared in different clinical um, arenas. So um, quicker, faster sharing of data. So what does it all mean? I mean? What does this all mean to patients? It means that you're going to get better care at the end of the better? day. Better? Better. Go ahead. Um, I Make think you case. will get better. Um, in the last five Five years, the, the information's been shared. Um, you can actually get it to different places. So, as a patient, in the past, you'd go to one doctor, and the doctor, you might have come to St. Joseph's, you might have gone to St. Luke's, you might have gone to Virtua. Unfortunately, the physicians taking care of you didn't see any of that data, right? So he's taking care of you in a way that's probably blind in, a, in, some, in some ways. Today, um, given uh, with some of the technologies we have in place and some of the standards we have in place, that physician, if he's, a, if he's got the data and if he's hooked up to getting the data, he'll see everything that was done at our facilities. And when he takes care of you, he'll know that you're on this medication. He'll know that you had that allergy. He'll know that you had this CAT scan. So when now a physician is taking care of you, they've got a better picture of all the things that have been done to you, regardless of where they've been done. So let's play this out for a second. And I, I, don't, I don't think I'm breaking any HIPAA rules. And if I am, you'll tell me. We'll tell you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I happened to be doing a seminar about a couple months ago at your place, as you know. Yes. Talking about the use of opioids mm -hmm. yes. uh, in the emergency right. room. And it was a seminar with Senator, mm -hmm. uh, Senators Menendez and Booker and a whole bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing this seminar and I was having some pain and long story short, uh, they were like, hey, we gotta check this out. And sure enough, I had a problem and go through the emergency department and wind up in ICU, right? Yes, right. So I had no choice, there it was, it happens. So are you saying that as that's happening, that technology is, the technological system is set up so that the folks who are winding up treating me in the ED and other after that in the ICU, they have access to what? The so, electronic medical record. Correct. Of so what? Your patient information. So of any hospital that I've been in. Not well, we yet. have it. Not we have it yet. internally. We're, getting there. We're mm -hmm. getting there. We have yeah. it internally. So if you come to one of our organizations, we can share information across our entire system through an electronic medical record. Well, only, but and, only within your system. Yes, and we'll in New Jersey and in Pennsylvania, we're able to share information between organizations that participate in exchanging of information, but it's very limited as far as our 
capability of how much information we can share. This is the thing that's really interesting to me because what, what strikes me is people, things happen to people wherever it happens, Correct. right? Correct. So you don't always go where you're going to go or you're planning on going. Mm -hmm. So I think to myself, if we're going to do this right, why wouldn't the information cross borders? Why wouldn't they be with competitors? Why wouldn't everyone have access to everything if we're really about the patient? Well, what am I missing here? No, absolutely. If you think about it for a second, we I'll are the yep. most information rich industry there is, right? Right. And the information is, is really important. It's life and death. So you're absolutely right, and we're getting there. There's a lot of great work going on in our state where our hospitals, who are fierce competitors, are coming together with that same concept. They Let's are share doing this. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Even though they're competitors? Absolutely. Yeah, so Why? What's, 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 how's that in their interest? Because it's for the patient. It's all about the patient. So I'm the founder the patient's of... Patient's first. I'm the founder of Jersey Health Connect. Jersey Health Connect is the largest... Jersey large, Health Connect. Yep, Jersey Health Connect is one of the largest health information exchanges in the state. We have 32 member hospitals. Um, so what we have done is we've created an aggregated database so all of our hospitals donate data, patient data, into this database. So if you go to Trinitas today, yes. and say you're out, out there in Which Elizabeth. happens to be in Elizabeth. Sure. Uh, so if you're in Elizabeth and right. something happens, you, go to the, you have to go to the Trinitas ED. And you go to their ED, they've got a little button on their electronic medical record. And if you push it, uh, anything that you might have had done at St. Joe's, they'll see. So if you had a CAT scan at St. Joe's, they'll see that result. Because so, they're part of it. Because they're part of the health information exchange. But, but does someone have to be part of it? Someone has to be part of it in order to, to share the information, but it's, it's kind of a twofold thing, right? Okay. So the, um, the How health, do you guys see it? Well, so there's, there's the healthcare industry and then there's the, the government piece, right? So there's been all this oh, the work government? on the government side, the, the regulations <laughs> and meaningful use and, and all that work. On the hospital and, and physician side, right. right, is there's been two strategies primarily which have been best of breed, which means... What does that mean? That means... You know, if the OR liked a piece of software for the electronic medical record, they had their piece. The emergency department had their piece. The physician office had their piece. The so other it's fragmented. Very fragmented. The other piece is there's single vendor solutions, which the market has evolved to to more of now. Um, what does that mean? So if uh, that you think e there's enough jargon in the medical industry? There's there's <laughs> tons of it. Would you call it again single? Single vendor. Go ahead. Versus best of breed, and so that best of breed approach worked worked pretty good when the data was okay to stay in the silo, right? So if you went to the ED and your ED was only there and it was just that episodic approach, that software was customized best for that. But we've changed now into, into this um, continuum of care process in healthcare, right? Healthcare has changed. So it's all about touch points now. So if I have you in the ED and you're there for a sprained ankle, well, if I know all these other things about you, well, I can have a meaningful conversation with you as opposed to you coming back, you know, making another appointment for something different, right? So now I, I have a much better picture of you, and I'm able to take care of a population mm -hmm. rather than just these episodic visits. So if I'm down at your place at Virtua. Yep. Right. South, to tell folks your footprint? South Jersey, right outside of Philadelphia, um, yeah. about uh, two, two million uh, people population. Your footprint? Uh, Patterson and Wayne, um, about... With what two counties, two three counties? Yep. Um, your footprint, same. the entire state worth yeah. association. Uh, so you're, and your footprint? Uh, we're in West uh, New Jersey and East uh, Pennsylvania. Got it. So mm -hmm. down in your place, mm -hmm. something happens. Someone actually lives in. I happen to live in North New Jersey, but you're down in south, uh, southern part of the state or Philadelphia, whatever. Going to your place for whatever it is, because there's a need to go. The linking up again. How, how do you link up and get the information again? So, so today it's kind of twofold, right? So through work that Linda and others have done, right, we've created this exchange across New Jersey that does, does some sharing of data, right? So we, we have the ability to connect the, the five or six HIOs. HIOs. Health information. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the exchange, right? It's really it. the exchange. Um, it's the hub. The, yeah, AT, the, hub. the, the ATM got, got of it, healthcare. Got it, got it. Right. Um, but then we're also, many people in the state are moving on to the same um, EMR platform. So at the, the electronic, electronic medical, medical record. I'm embarrassed. I know. So go ahead. <laughs> five years from now, there's probably all the major health systems are probably on two vendors, right? Five so years? Five, six years out. You right? think they're all going to be on? Go ahead. I think they'll, I, really the way the market's shaping up there is a vendor called Epic and there's a vendor called Cerner and they have most of the market share. So really at the end of the day, I think exchange will start to get easier from a, from a health system perspective. Physician offices will still be um, on different platforms and that's where the exchanges yeah. will really play. They'll help connect that data. And better for the patients? In. 
Absolutely. Steve, talk about that. For a second, let's think about this. Sure. You can go anywhere in the world, pull out your ATM, and they know exactly who you are, yep. exactly how much money yeah. you have, and how much money you don't have. Anywhere. Right. Anywhere. anywhere. So to us, unless you can go anywhere in the health system in the country and in internationally, until they know exactly everything about you, we're, we're not doing our job. So we're really serious about getting it to where it needs to be. Because some of these things, I mean, the most small piece of information could be, could be life-threatening if they don't know it. But I think you know the what? Medication, sorry, like the medication you're on. The yes. What, what, what uh, test you have? I take certain medication for right. migraines, right? Right. Exactly. And I was told that for a certain procedure that had to be done, that particular medication that I take uh, prophylactically, so I don't get the migraine. That that what's the word when it? It's contraindicated. Contra yeah, right. Mm -hmm. it rolled off my tongue. So it doesn't work well <laughs> with drug to another, drug interaction. Yeah, it didn't chamber. work well with. That's right. If you don't have that information, You're that's right. not good. That's right. exactly yep. correct. So that's partly why this matters so much. Jump and, back and in. And a lot of people are allergic to things like penicillin, for example. They're allergic to those. So if we can share that medication across, know that they're allergic. Uh, know that they have known allergies and really understand their history, right. uh, which is what part of this ex exchange happens. So when the exchange comes over, we know some past medical history, we know results, medications. We also know what problems. So if you have a chronic condition, we can understand the impact of that chronic condition as well. So it's, it's a consolidated uh, summary of the record that we can share. So it may not be, you know, your entire life history of all your financial information because we don't need that, but we sure. need to know what your current credit score is right now, and we need to kind of understand that okay, uh, aspect so, of it. So let's, a couple other areas. We're going to go uh, up, uh, up against a break in about a moment here, but I'm curious about a couple things. Number one, we're going to talk about expense in a moment, the cost of all this, because mm -hmm. this ain't cheap. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not cheap. But I don't want to talk about security for a second. So there are a bunch of people watching um, on a whole range of uh, broadcast on the public television file side and digitally as well, uh, listening on radio, who are saying, wait a minute, how do you protect my privacy? How do you protect my confidentiality? You got to talk to people about that. We do. Because they're do worried. Mm -hmm. Rightfully so. Absolutely. Rightfully so. You well, know. So, um, disabuse them of that. Well, you know, and it's, it's interesting because I had a, a very smart man once told me that, you know, even though we build a 10 foot wall, the bad guys build the 11 foot ladder and it kind of works that way, right? Um, but we have done a lot of things. We've put in firewalls, we've put in log management systems, we've put in um, other surveillance systems. And um, at the end of the day, even though we've put all that in, the weakest link is still our people. Um, what do you mean by that? Phishing is probably the most phishing. Um, phishing is, so when you get email that comes into an organization and it's socially engineered so that somebody makes it look like it's coming from your CEO or it's coming from a doctor or it's coming from someone else and now you've got someone in your organization who responds to that email and either clicks on a link that lets a malicious software come into your system or into your network or they send a file of some kind that probably should have go, shouldn't have yeah. gone out. So while we're putting in really fancy technology that's really expensive, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, our best course is still employee training. Let's do this. Uh, we're going to go to a break in a moment, but I just wanted to say this. I should have said this up front. In the spirit of giving out valuable information, I should have disclosed earlier, and I will now, that I've done some leadership and communication training yes, at St. Joseph's. Mm -hmm. um, on that note, Let's take a quick break. We come back. We'll talk a little bit more about cybersecurity. And this is not cheap. We'll talk about the expense of all this, talking about information and health care and all what it means to you right after this. To see more Caucus New Jersey with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Uh, we're talking about uh, healthcare and technology. L can we do uh, a little bit more on cybersecurity? Then we're going to do some Fitbit right. and other technology. I'd like to make a point if I can. I mean, the one lesson we learned with Hurricane Katrina was that paper is not safe. So if, your medical, record, if your medical yeah, records right. Right, are Absolutely. sitting there in a doctor's office or at a hospital and they get flooded or there's a fire, what then? So, so, so uh, you know, as, as much as cybersecurity gives us all great pause and we need to really focus yeah. and, and, and be ahead of the bad guys, my concern is that at least we, have, we can tell who looked at it. We, yeah. can, we can back it up. We can, we can yeah. secure it. Um, so we have these other issues we've got to deal with, and we will get there. I'm confident we will. But people who think the paper's safe are fooling themselves. We still, have, we still use a lot of fax machines in healthcare, right? Physicians really want things faxed. 
they change their telephone number and the fax goes to the deli down the street. Right. Um, so, 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 I mean, there's other things that, you know, it's not just electronic uh, information that's that's exposed. So, so by can thinking that the, the electronic and technical side, I jump back Can here. I flip on the other side yeah. of that? We need the information, and when I say that, the researchers and the medical industry needs the information because we need to access and understand patients better in a larger population so that we can do more research to come out with new breakthrough medicines or, or medications or treatments. Yeah. So if we don't have access to that information, how are we going to continue yeah. to evolve as a healthcare industry, as making people more healthy? You've got to have it. Security protection. So I want to touch on the phishing thing because I think that's really important and it's been prevalent in the news. That's what leads to the ransomware attacks. Um, and I think Linda is exactly right. It's all about the education. So we recently just purchased a program where we now run internal phishing attacks. So we run a, a, an attack on our employees and, and we know who opened the email, who opened the attachment. So when we used to have questions and say, who are these people that still open up attachments? Address rehearsal meaning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we know We're and then we can thing. do targeted education to that person and say, mm-hmm. you shouldn't yeah. open up attachments that you know you don't know what they yeah, are they because- click on something, you can send them right to the- Right. Right, right to the track. So it's not punitive, so you get it's education. What do you do with it? We, we go have, so we, we can track it, right? So if it's the first time, it's, a, it's an education uh, done electronically with some videos mm-hmm. and things along that line. If it's a second time, then, then we go to the, to the person and we say, hey, let, you know, let's explain to you the risks here. It only takes one person yeah. and, and you can, you can cause a lot of Anything else on security here? Yeah, the, yeah, the just, other point with, with respect to that, you know, our workforce is our, is our biggest weak link, right? Yeah, so if we can work that. with them, mm-hmm. they're really getting up, make them more alert, more aware, they can be our best ally as well. Yes. And more importantly, what we're teaching them, they can use in their own personal life to protect their information. Right. Yeah. Right. Real quick, uh, we're going to do the economics in a second. I just took your, is this your Fitbit? Fit yep. Yeah. I've had, a, someone gave me a Fitbit for uh, the holidays. I don't even know how to turn it on. Uh, I have it. I work out every day, but I don't have my Fitbit. Well, you know, if you go to Atlantic Health System and you go to Morristown Medical Center and you go right down into the hallway, there's a little storefront and they will teach what? you exactly how I to mean, use is it. it. Is it that, co- first of all, talk about the value of something like this. Yep. And, and does it really make a difference? In our lives, like, th- 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 these apps. Yeah. So talk about the value. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, How I think that it? I think there's a there's a curve on engagement. There are people that want to be active, and there are people that don't want to be active. So if we're talking about Fitbit or applications for the patient, some patients want to be engaged in their activities, and some some don't want to. So what I look at is the software. Uh, and the systems like a Fitbit will supply technology to the people that want to use it. So, for example, I look at the step counter every day. Your and step counter. I use the mm-hmm. step counter. And so maybe I'll take an extra flight. Maybe I won't go four extra miles if I'm not a runner. I mean, I'm going to run if I'm a runner. But I may take an extra flight or a couple of extra things. So if I kind of understand and if I understand that over time that weight and obesity and all these other things cause Absolutely. type 2 diabetes and all other things. I need to keep my weight under control, not because, because I could be, depending on my past medical history, I could be a right. high risk for type 2 diabetes, so why not take a couple of extra steps a day? So I think the issue is, is the lack of information, the lack of understanding of the impact of long term by not doing things. So the this applications... Helps. And this is all working right now. Yes. Well, you know, so I can just simply take yours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, but it's interesting because uh, healthcare apps and wellness apps are the most, uh, I guess, the, the ones that have the most frequency in the app stores. And what they found, if you um, look at some of the data from the industry, is that within like a month, people stop using the That's apps that they, right. they download. And it's because um, what they found is because there is very little interaction to anything else. So when we look at apps, are those apps connected to something that's gonna engage you, right? So, what do you mean, engage me? Um, are, Talk to me? No, maybe, or well, is it, uh, is it a game? Is it, uh, are they, can you compete with some of your friends? Um, because I've gotta be what more they invested found, in it. Yeah, what they right, found right, is that people yeah. need to have an, uh, there's gotta be something that hooks them. It's not just information. Correct. Right. Okay, right. let's, can we, go ahead. Yeah, because I want to talk about the money part after yeah. this. Just yeah. one last point to it, so it, it's interesting, that, and I agree, Linda, you know, it, the, the gaming part of it, you know, mm-hmm. so, you know, every night, you know, me and my kids battle over who, who's had the most steps, so, you Do know, you the really? smack talk begins. Um, <laughs> the smack and, talk! And, 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 you know, we, we try to see who can, can outdo That's each technical. other. Yeah. 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 Um, Fitbit and fat and, and smack talk, I like that. <laughs> but, but the other thing, right, is it's not about, you know, so, hey, all right, great, I have 10,000 steps. It's not knowing 10,000 steps. That's mine. Um, but and it's working? It's working. Um, <laughs> but it's got one working. And I'm an IT guy, right? So I have a point of failure. I have a second right, one just, just, one. Just, just, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Redundancy is important. Redundancy is important. First of all, let's make it clear. Redundancy.
redundancy means it's a backup system. Right. That's right. I just want to be clear right. with that. So yeah. the other thing is, right, it's a lot of data. <laughs> right. So that thing captures a lot of data. A lot of these home devices, and there's more and more on the market, they capture a lot of data. These electronic medical records and technology we're putting in front of clinicians have a lot of data in them already. So it's really not about seeing, great, you did 10,000 steps, your blood pressure's good. It's finding the exception. So if that thing or the blood pressure cuff at home can find an exception, that's what the clinician you know you have needs a problem? to see. Right. Hey, listen, your blood pressure is one or 190 over or 120, you got a problem. Or your weight spikes or yeah. something. Yeah. Those are the things, the, okay. the exceptions are what okay. are important. Let's talk money. Yep. Not yeah. cheap. No. How not expensive? Cheap. Not cheap. Well, I mean, relative to the benefits, uh, you know, so let, let's talk about money for a second. Okay. So the federal government, back in 2009, under the High Tech Act, which is a stimulus package, invested, I think at the time they estimated it to be, when it was all dust settled, about $20 billion, right? And I don't know, the war in Iraq for like one month was probably half of that or almost that, right? right? So if you look at the way healthcare costs have kind of like leveled off a bit. Yeah. A lot of people say Obamacare, and that, that might be true there, but you can't co co care coordinate with Obamacare. You can't do a lot of the things that we're trying to do to become more efficient. And efficiency is a big part of this, Steve. We, we talked about this technology. That's not the end in itself. It's treating patients more mm -hmm. efficiently in a more appropriate place. Without information, how do you do that? Stay right there. Because uh, we had the, uh, did we have the CEO from Teladoc here? Yeah, but Teladoc. It, it, We're yep. using American um, yep. Wealth. Yep. Same American thing. Wealth. It's yeah, the video, video visits. American, American, American Wealth. Wealth. So, so whatever the, 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 the particular, because e we're not going to promote any one company, but the idea is I know what they do is you actually visit your doctor. So I, I was talking to my doctor about a shoulder problem I had. The other, people are going to think, like, what's the guy falling apart? But, um, I had a but shoulder you look good, problem. Steve. That's we, had a, we had a good conversation, but he's like, why don't you just come in? Because we were texting each other, then talking. He goes, come in. And he looked at it. He needed to see it. Could we have done that? Video conference? Something like that, maybe not because it well, may be a touch do? of field. But, you, you know, you if, can. You, if, if you've got a cold, if you have a cold, cold. Um, follow up visits, yep. follow up consults, um, it, it's taking care to where the patient needs mm -hmm. to have it. What is it? Best. Is it video uh, cons consult with your physician? It depends on where you are in, in the country. Um, again, it, it's it, Why? it there are there are specific rules. So um, New Jersey is a, a, a telephonic. Um, state right now, although there's, there's legislature uh, going what does that on. Mean? You can't do. Well, the, the process is set up to, to do by by phone. New Jersey, um, New Jersey has do not a couple. Pay for right. an right. e-visit oh. or an electronic visit via video. But so it's a regulation in New Jersey. Really? Yep. In New Jersey. State, state by state. State by state. It's not a national law. And, but and CMS, pair by pair. Right, but um, CMS, which means the federal government. The federal government is starting to try and um, normalize Medicare. those rules. Yes, because um, they want to start providing cheaper care. So video, and there's many, many uh, conditions is that it can cheaper? be. It is. Oh, yeah. Video care is not as expensive as going in. That's correct. But well, is, is there a quality issue here that's been documented that, hey, it's not as good? Um, I don't think they've been able to say that yet. Because, but it is for very specific conditions, right? Um, things that if you need to really palpate something or, 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 you know, you really need a patient in front of you. But New Jersey is very interesting because New Jersey has two issues. One is today you can't uh, prescribe. You can't even do uh, e-prescribing for a patient unless you've already had a face-to-face -face relationship, relationship with them. If you go to... Um, you go to California and you get sick in California, you can actually dial up a doctor, do an e-visit, and that physician can do an e-prescription for you to the CVS down wow. the street. We can't do that in New Jersey. And so uh, it's, I think it's frustrating for everyone because you've got these disparate rules and but regulations. you want some parameters here. You do, and there are parameters. Um, and, you know, most physicians will tell you that they, they run algorithms for a good percentage of everything that they treat. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to talk 3D printing before we get out of here. Jump on this. One, one example, though, okay. about tel telemedicine, behavioral health. You have a patient yeah. who might be mm -hmm. beginning to have an, an, an episode or an incident, yes. right? Boy, time's of the essence. Right. You know, if that takes them a day or three to get Can a I physician. Can I see you in four days? That's not going to work for a person who's suffering mm -hmm. today who's got a problem that could be dealt with today and resolved today. Mm -hmm. Or Four days, can, right? Right. Big. It's, and they're sitting in. They're sitting right emergency. Now. And they're sitting see in emergency. See each other right now. Right. As these but devices yeah. get, you know, the, this is a sensor, right? It's it's right. tracking my steps and all that. Right. As these sensors begin to grow, and we already have some that we're ingesting for medications and other things. Now right. we get more uh, information. And as you were saying, there's you know one spike in something. Now we're not even. You're not calling us on the eve. Is it? We're calling you and saying, yeah. hey, we see an anomaly. Let's jump on the phone yeah. or let's jump on a technology yeah. to see it. Real quick, 3D printing. What does it have to do with this whole conversation? Real yeah, quick, so minute left. Go. Basically, the ability to print on demand things that we need for you that fit better for you. So right. today things are customized to a mass quantity, and now I can make something for your knees, something brace, anything that you 
you have fit you because there's organs, only one Steve. Organs, ears. They're doing yeah. that today. All kinds of stuff. Where do you think he's going in the next five years? Which Where specifically? Are we going with this? The whole, the whole, is technology going to be more and more a part of medical care, health care? Absolutely. Um, I, we can do things cheaper and technology will be an enabler of that. Um, it'll also create better access points. Um, think about the, you know, People talk, seconds, about, go ahead. People, talk, people talk about work-life balance, right? It's more of a blend now, right? So, you know, I look at myself as my own little uh, case study, right? So I'm on the soccer field, I'm in work, I'm here, I, try, I blend work together. It's all done through this device now, right? It saves a lot of time. So we've spoken all about clinical stuff, but what about the, the yeah. more um, access-related things? Scheduling an appointment, follow-up visits, I having a video I wish the technology visit. could create more time on public television. Yeah, we'll the yeah. preceding <laughs> program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Oscar Health Insurance, the New Jersey State Nurses Association, and the Institute for Nurses, Wells Fargo, Felician University, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by Cone Resnick, transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Planning for retirement, whether you are entering the workforce or close to retiring, Wells Fargo can offer you guidance and resources to help you pursue your retirement goals. Planning at any age, from building savings to generating income in retirement, Wells Fargo can provide the tools to help you make the most of your retirement. Wells Fargo, together, will go far.